very good morning. You're watching Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. Let's start straight away with the headlines this Saturday morning. Budget session of Parliament comes to an end. Rajya Sabha bids farewell to 53 members on the last day. Campaigning to end for elections in Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry today. Congress delegation meets election commission, seeks ban on Prime Minister's campaigning in Kerala over Somalia remark. Prime Minister Narendra Modi pitches for permanent solution to fishermen issue during talks with Lankan President. Two leaders also discuss ways to boost trade. Journalists shot dead in Sivar in Bihar. NDA delegation meets president, seeks imposition of central rule over alleged lawlessness in the state. And fresh trouble for Nepal government, Madhesi parties to restart indefinite protests today, demanding more rights. The Rajya Sabha was adjourned sine die on Friday, bringing an end to the second half of the budget session of parliament. In this session, the Rajya Sabha worked for 69 hours and 15 sittings and passed 12 bills. The 239th session of the Rajya Sabha commenced on 25th of April and came to a close on Friday, that is today. The upper house passed or returned 12 government bills, but 19 hours were also lost on issues like political crisis in Uttarakhand, allegations of corruption in Augusta Westland chopper deal and anomalies pointed out by CAG in KG Basin Gas Project in Gujarat. During the session, 81 zero-hour submissions were made, while 225 start questions and 2,391 unstart questions were answered. Members also expressed concern on matters of urgent public interest through 37 special mentions. Private members introduced six bills. The House also had two short-duration discussions on drought and the Augusta Westland chopper deal. Transacting its main task of legislative business, the House during the session passed or returned 12 government bills which demonstrated the desirability of careful deliberation through available instrumentalities and the benefits accruing from it. The House also welcomed 13 newly elected or re-elected members while it bid farewell to 53 retiring members. The House was also informed by the Chair about the resignation of Vijay Malia and Pranav Pandya. 14 department-related parliamentary standing committees tabled respective reports. The House witnessed lively debate during the discussions on the working of the ministries of Health and Family Welfare and Human Resource Development. Notwithstanding the fact that a good amount of both legislative and non-legislative work was transacted, the proceedings of the House were occasionally disrupted. I have asked the Secretary General to make available the statistical information relating to this House. I take this opportunity to thank the Leader of the House, the Leader of the Opposition, the Ministers of Parliamentary Affairs, the Leader of various parties and groups, and the honourable members for the cooperation extended by them in the overall functioning of the House. The Chair also made references to the passing away of sitting members Praveen Rashtrapal and four former members of the Rajya Sabha. This is Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Prime Minister Narendra Modi bid adieu to the retiring members of the Rajya Sabha on Friday. The Prime Minister also expressed remorse over non-passage of the GST bill during the tenure of the retiring members. However, Congress leader Anand Sharma said it was possible to pass the bill through a consensus. I also join you. As the goods and services tax bill failed to see the light of the day during the budget session of parliament, Prime Minister Narendra Modi scrupled over non-passage of law to give effect to unified tax regime in the country. He noted that Rajya Sabha members were the representatives of the state and the tax reform measure would have benefited the states immensely. दो ऐसे निर्णय होते तो जिस राज्य को आप रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं वो राज्य आपके प्रति हमेशा हमेशा गर्व अनुभव करता एक जीएसटी ताकि जो बिहार से यहां आते हैं जीएसटी से बिहार का भरपूर लाभ होने वाला था यूपी को भरपूर लाभ होने वाला था 
एक या दो राज्य को छोड़कर के सब राज्यों को भरपूर फायदा होने वाला था Meanwhile, Deputy Leader of Congress Anand Sharma highlighted the important bills passed by the upper house and expressed disappointment on the slug fest over the GST bill. ये भी सही है कि देश हित समझना सत्ता पक्ष और प्रतिपक्ष दोनों के लिए जरूरी है। हमने भी अनुभव किया है जब हम उस तरफ बैठे थे तो गति रोध और आम सहमति नाम बनने के कारण जिस GST का आपने जिक्र किया उस बरसों रुकी रही। हम सोचते हैं कि आज एक ऐसा वातावरण बने देश में जो राजनैतिक संवाद में कटुता आ गई है उस कटुता को कड़वेपन को दूर किया जाए क्योंकि सब लोगों को मिलकर इस समाज को और इस देश के निर्माण को काम करना है और प्रयास हमारा ये रहे सबका एक दूसरे को समझने का PM Modi also voiced discontent over non passage of the compensatory afforestation fund management and planning authority bill also expressing gratitude to the retiring members prime minister said that the 53 members in their 6 year tenure have seen two governments Conveying his best wishes, he thanked them for their contribution to important policy decisions. This is Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And time now for all the election updates in our special segment, Verdict 2016. The fierce two-month-long campaigning for the 16th May Assembly polls in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry will end today. An almost three crore strong electorate will cast their votes to elect 140 lawmakers in the Kerala Assembly. The voters will have to choose from 1,203 candidates, of which 109 are women. Tamil Nadu has had as many as 3,776 candidates in the field. An electorate above five crore will be casting their votes to elect 234 lawmakers in the state assembly. Meanwhile, an electorate of above nine lakh will cast their votes to elect 30 MLAs in the Puducherry Assembly. The Union Territory has 344 candidates in the fray, including 21 females and one transgender. Results for the state assembly elections will be declared on 19th May. The Congress party has urged the Election Commission to prohibit Prime Minister Narendra Modi from campaigning in Kerala for the assembly elections. A party delegation met the Election Commission and made the demand over the Prime Minister's remarks comparing child death ratio among scheduled tribes in the state with that of Somalia. The Congress has said that the Prime Minister has distorted facts which amounted to violation of the model code. In a memorandum, the Congress said that the Prime Minister has dented the dignity and image of the electorate as well as their elected government in the state. How can the Prime Minister of the country mislead people for cheap political gain during an election campaign by trotting out such false facts, creating a non-level playing field People tend to believe a Prime Minister more than ordinary people. And we have therefore, in the end, asked the Election Commission to take three very categorical steps. Number one, to declare that the Prime Minister of India has violated the Model Code of Conduct, Clause 2 in particular, to pass strictures against him, and to prohibit him from campaigning in Kerala at any point of time from here onwards. With that, we'll slip you into a very short break here on Breakfast News. Lots more on the other side. Translation means converting knowledge into products useful for improving the quality of life. So we need to apply that knowledge to find solutions. And that is what we are trying to do you, you know, in this institute. Somebody who has understanding of biology, somebody who has understanding of medicine, somebody who has understanding of engineering. If a team is put together, can we then develop novel diagnostics? Watch Eureka with Dr. Sudhanshu Brati, Dean at Translational Health Science and Technology Institute, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. 
Watch Rajya Sabha Television Documentaries on Rajya Sabha Television. Thanks for staying with us on Breakfast News. Well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi pitched for a permanent solution to the issue of frequent arrests of Indian fishermen by the Sri Lankan Navy during his talks with Sri Lankan President Maithripala Shirisena on Friday. A range of other key matters, including ways to boost trade, were also discussed. Modi hosted a dinner for Shirisena over which both the leaders discussed all major bilateral issues, particularly problems being faced by the Indian fishermen. The status of various economic projects being implemented by India in the island nation and steps to further increase trade and investment also figured in the discussion. Shirisena, who is on a two-day visit to India, will leave for Ujjain today to attend the Simhas Mahakum. He will be accompanied there by Prime Minister Modi. The Sri Lankan president will also visit the famous Sachi Stupa in Madhya Pradesh. He will then go to Bengaluru and depart for Colombo in the evening. The government is contemplating to empower the anti-terror investigating agency, the NIA. The centre plans to allow it to probe in foreign countries if there is any attack on Indians and Indian assets. The Home Ministry is planning to amend the National Investigation Agency Act, enacted in 2008 after the 26-11 Mumbai terror attack, to give additional powers to the agency mandated to investigate all terror-related cases. As per the proposal, the NIA will be given powers to investigate in foreign soil with the permission of the host government, since there have been instances of attacks on Indians and Indian assets like foreign missions in the past. PTI is quoting sources as saying that a note for the Union Cabinet is being prepared and once it is cleared, the amendments will be tabled before Parliament for its note before it is included in the NIA Act. The NIA may also be given special powers to keep eyes on activities of modules of Middle East terror group, the Islamic State, and Pakistan-based terror groups to ensure any attempt to harm India will be detected well in advance. Also, the NIA may be authorised through the amendment of the Act to commute the charge of death penalty to life imprisonment in, pleas bar in plea bargaining cases. And the NIA has dropped all charges against Sadhvi Pragya Thakur and five others in the 2008 Maligaon blast case, citing lack of evidence against them. The stringent Makoka law was also dropped against all the other 10 accused, including Lieutenant Colonel Prasad Srikant Purohit. The opposition slammed the BJP government, accusing it of shielding its own people. In a big relief to the 2008 Maligaon blast accused, the NIA today dropped all charges against Pragya Thakur and four others. While charges under the stringent Makoka law were dropped against all the other 10 accused, including Lieutenant Colonel Prasad Srikant Purohit. In its chart sheet submitted to a Mumbai special court, the NIA said that sufficient evidence was not found against the accused, adding that the prosecution against them was not maintainable. There was a lot of uh, political layering over these cases and a lot of people were sort of projected as being the face of one kind of terrorism and another, in this case, you know, saffron terrorism and so on and so forth. So, uh, I, I, there, there is, I mean, Malaga 2006 and 2008 have happened. But I don't think necessarily the, N the uh, ATS and the NI got the right accused uh, in these cases. I believe that uh, the natural course of um, uh, investigation process has uh, taken place and uh, justice should prevail. Uh, what is important is there should be no interference uh, at any level from any corner. The significant development will pave the way for a discharge and early release from jail for Sadhvi Pragya and other accused. However, Lieutenant Colonel Purohit and nine others will now be tried for charges including murder and conspiracy under the provision of Anti-Terror Law, UAPA, IPC, Arms Act and Explosive Substance Act. The opposition has slammed the BJP government for the exoneration of the accused. The National Investigative Agency जो कि आतंकवादी गतिविधियों के जांच के लिए बनाई गई थी, आज उन्हें बचा रही है, जो स्पष्ट रूप से आतंकवादी गतिविधियों में शामिल हैं। निश्चित रूप से केंद्र की सरकार एनआईए चीफ को एक साल का एक्सटेंशन देके उनसे अपने काम करा रही है, सत्ता का दुरुपयोग है, और भारतीय जनता पार्टी इस देश की सुरक्षा और 
There have been a lot of twists and turns in the probe. The case was investigated initially by Joint Commissioner of Mumbai's ATS, Hemant Karkare, who was killed during the 2611 Mumbai terror attack. ATS had booked 16 people but filed charge sheets against 14 accused. The NIA took over the case in 2011 after investigation and said that uh, the case was fabricated and the statements of witnesses were taken under force. Seven people were killed and 80 injured in the September 29 blast in 2008. The blast is said to be the first major case in which the involvement of right-wing Hindu extremists came to the fore. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha Television. In a landmark verdict, the Supreme Court dismissed a batch of petitions against the constitutional validity of the 156-year-old penal laws on defamation. The Supreme Court has ruled that the provisions are valid and do not violate the Constitution. Several political bigwigs had filed petitions in the top court. The court said people charged with criminal defamation will have to face trial. A verdict with far-reaching consequences. The Supreme Court on Friday upheld the constitutional validity of penal provisions on defamation law, observing that the right to freedom of speech is not an absolute right. Article 21 envisages that right to life is right to life with dignity. And nobody has a right to encroach upon that dignity, which is a fundamental right of a person. In that reasoning, the Supreme Court has upheld you know, in, in, in all my in, in this, what I feel it is, uh, that it is a, it, it, this section is not ultra virus anything. It is not as if only money can, uh, uh, can substitute it. It has got other connotations as well. The bench passed a judgment on a batch of petitions filed by Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, BJP leader Subramanian Swami and others. The bench directed magistrates across the country to be extremely careful in issuing summons on private complaints on defamation. The top court said we have to strike a balance between fundamental rights to freedom of speech and the reputation of an individual. The court also added that it was difficult to say that criminal defamation has a chilling effect on freedom of speech and expression. The right of reputation under Article 21 of Constitution cannot be allowed to be crucified at the altar of freedom of speech. जो घोटालेबाज इस देश के अंदर जो भ्रष्टाचारी हैं वो इस कानून का फायदा उठाते हैं और जो विसल ब्लोअर्स हैं जो भ्रष्टाचार को जागर करते हैं उनके ऊपर दबाव डालने की कोशिश करते हैं और इसके बहाने से उनका विक्टिमाइजेशन करने की कोशिश करते हैं बहुत अच्छा होता अगर सुप्रीम कोर्ट आज इस अपने फैसले में इसको डिक्रिमिनलाइज कर देता द कोर्ट रूल दैट सेक्शन फोर एंड फाइव ऑफ द आई डीलिंग विद द क्रिमिनल डेफिमेशन एंड सेक्शन वन ऑफ द कोर्ट ऑफ क्रिमिनल प्रोसीजर are constitutionally valid, dismissing the pleas of setting aside these sections. The constitutional validity of penal laws on defamation was challenged on the ground that they were outmoded and inconsistent with right to freedom of speech and expression. The Indian Penal Code makes defamation an offence punishable by up to a two-year jail term. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time for another short break here. We'll be right back. Art arisen from a multi-hued cultural canvas. Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. And encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30pm on Rajya Sabha Television. Thanks for staying with us. Now, at a time when the debate over whether lawlessness or jungle raj has returned in Bihar, another shocking incident of crime has been reported in Sivan district of the state. A senior journalist, Rajdev Ranjan, was shot dead Friday evening by unidentified men when he was going on his motorcycle to a fruit market. Surprisingly, the incident took place near a police station. Ranjan was rushed to the hospital, but he died on the way. The motive behind his murder is yet to be ascertained. Reports suggest Ranjan had been writing for a long time against lawbreakers of the area in Hindi daily Hindustan, of which he was the district chief. His killing has triggered a wave of protests by media persons in Bihar,
political slugfest has also begun once again. Gaya ka mamla shant bhi nahi hua tha. Abhi tak Mandurma Devi giriftar bhi nahi ho paayi hai. Aur ek badi ghatna ghat gai hai. Sab log chintit hai. Aur sab log ke man mein ek hi dar laga raha tha ki kahi Bihar fir purani dino ki aur lot karna chala jaye. Koi bhi aparadi ho. उसे 48 घंटों के अंदर हम गिरफ्तार करेंगे और इस तरह के भविष्य में घटना न हो इसकी रोकने के लिए हर पुरजोर उपाय ये सरकार करेगी सिमिलर इंसिडेंट टुक प्लेस इन नेबरिंग झारखंड एज वेल विद इन अ स्पैन ऑफ 24 आवर्स अखिलेश प्रताप सिंह अ रिपोर्टर विद द न्यूज़ चैनल वाज गन डाउन बाय अनआइडेंटिफाइड पीपल एट देवरिया इन छतरा डिस्ट्रिक्ट अ बंद वाज ऑब्जर्वड इन छतरा टाउन इन प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द किलिंग Chief Minister Raghuvar Das has also condemned the incident and asked the state police to arrest the assailants at the earliest. And as we told you, Bihar has been witnessing a series of crimes for the past few days. Recently, a 20-year-old boy was killed by a politician's son in Gaya, and that incident triggered anger among the opposition parties. A delegation of Union Minister Ram Vilas Paswan's LJP and Bihar BJP leaders met President Pranab Mukherjee. and demanded dismissal of the Nitish Kumar government and a CBI probe into the case. The delegation also requested again, uh, in fact, they demanded for imposition of president's rule in the state. In a three-page memorandum submitted to the president, the delegation, led by Chirag Paswan, raised concerns over the worsening law and order situation in Bihar. Earlier this week, Chirag Paswan had met Union Home Minister Radnath Singh and sought imposition of president's rule with immediate effect. सामूहिक हत्या जो हो रही है सत्ता के संरक्षण में ये हत्याएं हो रही है हम लोगों का कहना ये था कि उसकी जांच कराइए और अविलंब आप महामहिम राज्यपाल महोदय से एक वहाँ की अद्यतन स्थिति जो लॉ एंड ऑर्डर की है वो छिन्न विच्छिन्न हो गया है छत विछत हो गया है अविलंब मंगाएं और आवश्यकता पड़े तो उस पर जो भी आप सम्यक कार्रवाई हो सकता है वो कार्रवाई करें तमाम इन बातों का संज्ञान देते हुए लोक जनशक्ति पार्टी की तरफ से प्रमुखता से इस बात की मांग की गई और हम लोगों ने राष्ट्रपति जी को भी लिखित रूप में ज्ञापन दिया और उसमें मांग की है कि अब उचित समय आ गया है प्रदेश में राष्ट्रपति शासन लागू कर दिया जाना चाहिए एमएलसी The matter has been posted for hearing on Monday. Manorama Devi's lawyer said that she will not surrender before the court. She has been absconding since the raids. Her counsel further claimed that she has been implicated in the case as the allegations leveled against her are false. The counsel also said that she was not named accused in the FIR in connection with liquor bottle recovery case. A day after her suspension from JDU, the excise department sealed her residence in connection with the recovery of liquor bottles. as the police stepped up search for the legislator who could not be traced earlier a case was registered against her husband bindi yadav and son rocky yadav in connection with seizure of liquor bottles manorama devi's property has also been attached to some other news former isro chairman g madhavan nair was questioned by the cbi for the second consecutive day on friday The questioning was in connection with a case of wrongful gain of 578 crore rupees to a private multimedia company Devas by Antriksh the commercial arm of Isro. Nair was asked what was the reason for which agreement was entered with Devas Multimedia Private Limited. He was asked whether there was proper evaluation of technical capabilities. He was also asked whether there was consultation with other ministries like the telecom ministry before signing the agreement. The Antrik Davis deal had seen an early exit of Nair as chairman of Isro as he was the chairman of the governing council of Antrik when the deal was finalized. The CBI had registered a case last year. It alleged that the accused people had entered into a criminal conspiracy and the government officials abused their position by favoring the Davis deal. And news now from Haryana the Prakash Singh committee probing the role of police and civil administration officials during the Jat reservation stir has submitted its report to the state government pointing towards negligence on part of certain officials in controlling the situation The committee has castigated over 90 officers including IAS IPS officers besides various state cadre officers for lapses on their part Detailing the situation during the height of the violence that took place in Haryana in February, the committee said that police officials ran away instead of taking action while judicial officers 
rattled by the rampage, even took off their nameplates outside their houses to save themselves from the attacks. The committee examined as many as 143 video footages pertaining to the arson during the Jot agitation. It will also submit over 10 hours of video, uh, 10 hours of video recorded statements, in fact, to the Home Department of the State for further necessary action. After receiving the report, Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar said the government would examine it and take appropriate action at the earliest. करेंगे और रिपोर्ट अध्ययन करने के बाद जो भी रिपोर्ट के अंदर रिकमेंडेशंस की गई होंगी उनको पालन करेंगे उनका सख्ती से Meanwhile the Haryana government also notified an act for providing quota in services and admission to educational institutions for certain backward classes in the state called the Haryana Backward Classes Reservation in Services and Admission in Educational Institutions Act 2016 it provides 10% reservation in services for class 3 and 4 posts and 6% quota in class 1 and 2 posts to the Jats, Jat Sikhs, Rhodes, Bishnois, Tyagis, Mulla Jat or Muslim Jats in Schedule 3. It also provides for 10% quota in admissions to educational institutions for people of these castes. To neighbouring Nepal now, in fresh trouble for the government, a coalition of seven Madhesi parties and around two dozen ethnic groups will restart their protest from today onwards. They are demanding more rights, adequate representation and re-demarcation of the provincial boundary. The Madhesis will launch protest rally in Ratna Park of Kathmandu from today and will sit in front of the Secretariat for indefinite periods starting from Sunday. Over 50 people lost their lives during previous agitation by the Madhesis, which also, uh, which also saw blockade of Nepal's all trading points with India, resulting in huge shortage of essential commodities and souring Indo-Nepal ties. Madhesis, mostly of Indian origin, want the government to rewrite the constitution so that the concept of secularism, identity-based proportional inclusive representation and federal, demo uh, federal democratic republic status to Nepal could be constitutionally ensured. And supporters of top Hezbollah commander Mustafa Badridin have, have called for revenge of his killing. He was killed in Syria on Tuesday and his funeral was attended by thousands of people. The killing comes at a time when the fragile truce in Syria is now on the verge of collapsing. Thousands of people attended the funeral of high-ranking Hezbollah commander Mustafa Badridin in Beirut on Friday, who was killed in Syria this week. Draped in a yellow Hezbollah flag, Badruddin's coffin was carried through the streets as thousands of supporters called for revenge for his death. Fifty-five-year-old Badruddin was killed in an explosion in the Syrian capital of Damascus on Tuesday. His death comes as a major blow to the militant group since its military chief was killed in 2008. In a statement, the Hezbollah said it was investigating the nature of the explosion. While Israel declined to comment on whether it is involved in the killing, the White House has clarified that no aircraft from the US-led coalition were in the area of Damascus on the day when Badruddin was reportedly killed. So we've seen the reports of his death. I can't independently confirm them. Um, and the, uh, I guess the thing that I can confirm is that um, there were no US or coalition uh, aircraft uh, in the area where he was reported to be killed. But I, uh, but I can't further uh, uh, confirm the report. Badruddin was a key suspect in the 2005 assassination in Beirut of Lebanese ex-premier Rafiq Hariri and was most wanted by Israel. He was supervising the group's involvement in Syria's civil war since Hezbollah fighters joined the battles, along with President Bashar al-Assad's forces against militant groups trying to remove him from power. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's all we have in this bulletin. Thanks for your time.